we still drafting running backs in the first round? That's really my question, y'all. Bada bing! What's going on, YouTube? It's your boy, the one and only Tyrell, coming at you again with another video. If you're new to the channel, please do me a huge favor. Make sure you go ahead, click that subscribe button, click that notification bell, and also be sure to follow me on my other socials as well. Um, Instagram, TikTok, it's the same name on all platforms, Ty.Real with four L's. I know it's been a, a few weeks since I dropped a YouTube video. Uh, I've been dropping a lot of YouTube shorts, which is why, you know, I, I, I tell y'all, you know, you got to follow me on my other platforms because I've been uploading on Instagram and uh, Instagram and TikTok as well. So uh, it's been a few, like, I don't know, maybe like two or three weeks since I dropped the video. But uh, I'm back. I'm better than ever. And we're here to talk about the NFL draft, man. The NFL draft was a few days ago, um, as we all know. And um, there was a lot that uh, that took place. There was a lot that took place in this NFL draft. You know, Bryce Young was the number one overall pick. Uh, if you ask me, I think he's the best player in the draft. I think he's the best quarterback in the draft. I um, mean, it was really undisputed. There was a lot of people talking about uh, Will Levis, and Will Levis was getting a ton of hype. Uh, people love doing this, and you kind of feel bad for the player because Will Levis was generating so much hype, and I'm sure his agent probably told him, like, yeah, dude, like, you're going to be a top five overall pick, and he fell out the first round, which he shouldn't have been a first rounder in the first place. But uh, Bryce Young was the is the number one overall pick, or was, I should say, because it was in the past, <laughs> and it's well-deserved, man. It's, it's really well-deserved, bro. Bryce Young is uh, a talent... Like, like, like we never seen, bro. The escapability, the leadership, um, the humbleness, um, just everything about the brother, his character is what you look for in a franchise quarterback. The only knock on Bryce Young that a lot of people love to talk about is his size. You know, he's what, 5'10", and I think he weighs like 200 and something. Uh, I don't know. You got to fact check me on that. But, uh. You know, like I said before in previous videos, Bryce has always been on the smaller side, man. This is not something that is, that is new. You know, it's not like he just woke up one day and he was the smallest man out on the field. Nah, he's one of the smallest dudes out there on the field, but he still was able to win the Heisman, be the best quarterback in Alabama history, and lead that team with practically no weapons to the national championship. You know, so... Uh, Bryce Young, hands down, should have been the, the number one overall pick, and I don't want to hear anything about it, bro. CJ went number two. Um, this is huge for the for the Texans, man. You know, the Texans, <laughs> I mean, the, 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 tech, the Texans have no quarterback play at all. You know what I mean? So, I don't know really how I feel about CJ playing there. Um, they also, you know, got... Uh, freaking what's the what's the buzz? Will Anderson, dang, I'm over here drawing blanks and crap. They also got Will Anderson, who uh, I was very big on. Will Anderson, um, he was a dog at Bama. It was literally him. He was running the show on defense, and Bryce was running the show on offense. So uh, you really love to see it. You know what I mean? Now, does this mean Houston's gonna do anything? No, <laughs> I don't think anybody's really banking on the Texans to to make a run at anything. But you know they're in a rebuilding stage, and and drafting CJ Stroud was the best thing they could have possibly done. You know what I mean? C.J. Stroud is a generational talent. Um, the pinpoint accuracy, the precision, the way he's able to squeeze the ball in tight windows, um, that's what you look for in a in a quarterback, man. And my only thing that I've said thus far about C.J. Stroud is um, he's, he's, he's like a stationary guy. You know, in the Georgia game, we saw him be able to run and get loose in open field, and that was the most that I've ever seen C.J. Stroud run and move in his entire career, bro. You know, so it's really going to be interesting to see uh, what CJ can do with the Texans and along with Will Anderson. But I think, um, man, I, I can't believe I'm saying this right now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> but I think the Philadelphia Eagles won the draft, man. I I honestly think the, the, Phila the Philadelphia Eagles won the draft. And it... Y'all know me. I'm a Giants fan, man. And even though I think the Giants are going to win the Super Bowl and they're making a run, I got to give credit where credit is due. Um, 
I know y'all Eagles fans out there are probably happy with the way the draft went. So happy that you went and burned your city down again for like the 50 million time. We all know win, lose, or draw, y'all are burning something down anyway. So that's how y'all probably celebrated. Y'all went and freaking burned down all of Philadelphia. But the fact that they were able to get Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith, I, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, dude, you, you know, it's, it, 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 I'm kind of speechless right now, man, because their that defense is going to be loaded, man. Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, you have, uh, <laughs> you have freaking, I, I, I mean, bro, like, you have Jordan Davis, like, dude, th this defense is just loaded. You know, Hassan Reddick, like, I'm not going to say it's unfair because I, I still feel like my, my New York Giants can handle them. I feel like, you know, we can rough them up a bit. The Giants are going to be the best team in the NFC East, as we all know, but the Eagles won this draft. Um, and, you know, I, I give them credit, bro. I give them credit. It's not going to pan out to nothing in the season, as we all know, but I, I give them credit, man. Another, uh, you know, another draft pick that really stood out to me as well, too. Um, I think New England getting uh, Gonzalez, the cornerback out of Oregon. That was huge, man. That was huge that they was able to get Gonz uh, Gonzalez, man. Gonzalez was the best corner in this draft class, um, I think. And he might mess around and win uh, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Um, Bill Belichick is a mastermind, defensive mastermind, as we all know. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see how Gonzalez fits in that New England system. But what I, maybe y'all can break it down for me, because what I had trouble understanding was why, why did the Detroit Lions draft Jameer Gibbs and why did the Falcons get Bijan Robinson? Like, why are we still drafting running backs in the first round? That's really my question, y'all. I don't really get it at all by any means. You know, I, I think we've seen time and time again that you shouldn't draft running backs in the first round. You know, I, I mean, even look at like Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry didn't go in the first round and the brother was the best running back in the league. And it's still a top five running back in the league years later. You know what I mean? But I just don't understand. You, you could have went and got freaking Jameer Gibbs in the second or third, you know, and Jameer Gibbs is, is special, bro. Don't get me wrong. I, I think. J Jameer Gibbs is a superb talent, but to draft him in the first round and Bijan is generational. Bijan is a generational talent, but I wouldn't draft them in, in the first round. Well, I, I just don't get it. Why are we still drafting running backs in the first round? I thought we learned, bro. I thought we moved on. I thought we learned. You know, I, I, I really don't get it. People are over here trying to, I'm on IG live as well, but people are over here trying to join him, but I just don't get it, bro. I thought we moved on from that. And not only that, I don't know, even know why the... I, I don't know. I, I just don't get it. It's just weird to me. It's just weird, all in all, why we're still drafting running backs in the first round. I think uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba, who I had as wide receiver one, um, he was the first wide receiver taken in the draft, going to the Seattle Seahawks. I really wanted to see him in New England. Um... <laughs> the brother's going to be special in the league. The thing is with Seattle, you have DK and you have Tyler Lockett. You know, so I think Jackson is the number one receiver right now. But with DK and with Tyler Lockett, he's not going to be. He's, he'll probably be a third option, which is why I would love to see him in uh, New England because he would have taken on that number one role, which I feel is very fitting for him right now. But uh, he's gonna have to take the backseat for a little bit. Tyler Lockett, I I think is probably I think he's like thirty years old. Tyler Lockett, so he's about to be like out the league within the next year or two, or you know, traded or something elsewhere. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how Jackson does. Um, it'll be real interesting to see how Jackson does. I think uh, <laughs> when you look in the in the later rounds, um, I think Hendon Hooker should have potentially been a a first rounder um shoot if they was taking will levis people who had will levis going in the first round i thought henny hooker should have gone uh i thought we should have talk, been talking about henny hooker going in the first round um uh, but none of them went in the first round 
Um, Hendon Hooker to the Lions. Uh, I think Hendon Hooker, when you hear them talk about him at Tennessee, I mean, he's faced adversity throughout his college career. He has the leadership skills. You know, he has uh, the, the presence of what you want in a quarterback. He's a natural-born leader, and his team follows him. They gravitate to him. You know, he can win the locker room over. So he's not going to start um, right away with the Lions at all because Jared Goff is coming off of a pretty good season. But if he's able to sit and learn under Goff, um, for a year, two years, I think he could be a, a really good player. I, th I think he has a, a very high ceiling, and he kind of reminds me of a Russell Wilson. Granted, he's not as small as Russell Wilson at all. Um, Russell Wilson's not even six feet. <laughs> but um, just like his presence and his demeanor kind of reminds me of a, of a Russell Wilson. And Will Levis um, going to the Titans, I think that was a... Uh, that was a, a pretty crazy pick because, you know, they got Malik. Um, Malik Willis, what was it, last year? So I guess they're pretty much ready to push Malik Willis out the door. Um, I think Malik has, I think he's talented in sense of like his arm. And when I, you know, he just needs to be developed and he really needs to just learn, you know, so. I guess the the Titans are getting ready to push Malik out of there and, you know, give Will Levis the keys. But Will Levis is not ready to play right away, and I don't think he will. Um, Does he have a high ceiling? I guess not really, if you ask me. He has zero college production. Uh, he was he, he literally has zero college accolades. Um, people just love a, a, a big dude with a big arm that can run the ball, you know. And that's all Will Levis is. Um, I'm not really too big on Will Levis at all. <laughs> but what I honestly, what I the the craziest thing about the NFL draft, and granted, there were a lot of great draft picks, you know, in the later rounds as well. My New York Giants made a come up uh, in the first round. They drafted uh, Banks, the corner out of uh, Maryland, which was huge. For the Giants. The Giants definitely need help on the defensive side of the ball. And in the third round, they went and they got Jalen Hyatt, uh, the Belitnikov Trophy winner out of Tennessee. And my thing is with Jalen Hyatt, um, he's not as big as I thought he was. Uh, he's, he's also not as fast as I thought he was. Going into the combine and the draft process, people had him predicted to be a 4-1, a, 4-2 a four, four, type of receiver. He came out, he ran a 4-4 four, four flat. Um... His hands are a little shaky. His route running is shaky as well. You know, they just had him run a lot of go balls. Um, but the Giants definitely need help on, on offense. They definitely need receivers. So I think to get Jalen Hyatt in the third round, um, you know, it's a good move. You know, I'm surprised. Actually, I'm not so surprised. I take that back. I was going to say I was surprised he dropped, but I'm not so surprised he dropped because his hands are shaky. You know, he's not really much of a route tech or anything. But the Giants need a solidified route technician at the receiver position. Jalen Hyatt just isn't that. I'm not going to write him off just yet because I want to see what he's able to do. I'm sure Dable's going to find great ways to incorporate him in the Giants offense. If you ask me, I think Jalen Hyatt is no more than like a Darius Slayton uh, 2.0. <laughs> and Slayton is a good receiver, you know, able to stretch the field vertically. But his hands are shaky and that's... Basically what Jalen Hyatt reminds me of, you know? So um, I'm not going to write him off just yet because he did have a crazy season at Tennessee. And it's going to be interesting to see what he does uh, with the New York Giants, man. Daniel Jones has a set squad now. You know, he has Waller. He has Saquon. Um, now he has Jalen Hyatt, you know? So we're definitely going to see. And I forgot they have uh, Paris Campbell. <laughs> you know what I mean? So... They're definitely going to be able to see, um, you know, make we're, we're going to see the New York Giants make some noise. And I'm really excited about it. Like I said, I have the Giants predicted to win the Super Bowl this year. So this is just another step in the right direction. But I think Anthony Richardson as the number four overall pick was just crazy to me, man. Because the kid is a one-year starter. He might be the rawest prospect in the draft. So to see him go number four overall... I really just didn't understand the move. Um, granted, his ceiling is super high, and he has the highest ceiling out of 
probably any player in the draft other than maybe like a Jalen Carter. But when I think of the number four overall pick, I'm thinking of a, a player that is ready to make an immediate impact right now. And Anthony Richardson is nowhere near ready to play right now. You know, Anthony Richardson is nowhere near ready to play this season, to say the least. So in order, so for them to, for the Colts to pick him number four overall, I just don't get it, man. Uh, I don't think he's bad. You know, I, I, I mean, he's a, he's an elite athlete. He's a next level athlete, you know, and he has a cannon of an arm. He's just very inaccurate. Um, he, he's inaccurate. You know, sometimes he tries to, to do too much, um, with the ball and it's just like, Yo, like, he, he needs time to develop. I wouldn't have drafted him at number four overall. If you wanted to draft him in the first round, I would have drafted him in the later rounds. But I'm sure somebody would have taken him up early. Um, you know, everybody was amazed with his athleticism and his arm strength alone, which I completely get. But he, he's drawing a lot of comparisons to Cam Newton. But I'm dead. <laughs> if Anthony Richardson pans out, man... He's going to be a fun and exciting player to watch. The question is just if he pans out. <laughs> you know what I mean? But uh, we're going to see what he what he's able to do, you know? Um, all in all, the NFL draft this year was a great draft. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of quarterbacks um, in general, a lot of talent in this draft. Um, when you look at the quarterback position, when you look at the receiver position, I mean, you have Jackson, you have Zay Flowers, you have Quentin Johnston, who I think was a good pickup for the Chargers since they always have freaking receivers hurt. You know, this was just a, a it was a great draft, man. It, it truly was. But we're going to see how these players pan out. And let me know down in the comments below, are you happy with the players your team drafted? Let me know, man. Come holla at your boy. But uh, real quick, before I leave, man, I just want to leave y'all off. With some positive words and motivation, man. Because I know I'm speaking to somebody out there today. And my message to y'all, man, is sometimes you have to take a step back. You feel me? Sometimes in life, you have to take a step back. You may not want to take a step back. You know, sometimes God requires you to take a step back. But he requires you to take a step back. So you could take a giant leap forward, man. So keep your head up, believe in his plan, and continue to be the best version of you that you can possibly be. That's all the content I have for y'all folks, man. Till next time, y'all. Peace!